Alright, let me go. I'm gonna go on Facebook and make sure that's actually. Okay. Hey, Brad. Hey, Mackenzie. How are you? Oh I'm my really God. well. I'm sitting here in my office at Breathe Life Healing Centers in mm -hmm. West Hollywood, California. Where are you today, Brad? I'm in Nueva Yorko. Nice. Yeah, I just got home from vacation. You went to P-Town? I did. Do I look incredibly rested? <laughs> you look rested. You look sort of more beige. Yeah. You don't look tan, but you look beige. You want to hear a funny thing that happened while I was on vacation? Yeah. So these teeth have been upgraded since I got sober and stopped using meth. And uh, one of the, this tooth right here, this end, while I was eating something in Provincetown, you know, not known for its dental care, <laughs> uh, it shot across the room at the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so I went and grabbed it. I sought out uh, some dental care the next day, a couple uh, towns over, but that was holding that your was tooth in your hand. Yeah, it was like a stump. I was like, "Hey, honey," <laughs> I looked like a hillbilly. But... Yeah, it was a great vacation, but I'm really you, glad to be home. You know what I would have done? I would have gotten some super glue and just shoved it back on. Don't think I didn't think of that. <laughs> uh, Vacations, yeah, nice. Right. I haven't been on vacation, boss. Can I go on vacation, boss? Please submit it to HR. Oh, okay, got it, got it. Hey, you're at the clinic today, right? I am at the clinic, yeah. It's full. We are full. We are... How are we you are, doing? Are you holding up under the pressure? We are holding up under the pressure. We just had a big uh, process group where a bunch of us, not just one therapist, we all went in and sat with the clients and had a really good hour. And then I had to cut out and come here and talk with you. Oh, well, it's very nice to see you. Nice I feel to honored. see you, too. Hey, you know what? Um... Go ahead, we go were, ahead. No, I was just going to say, you know, American Graffiti, right? Yeah. Has this amazing following of people. Met. Say what? Where I first met you. Right. It has this amazing following of people who are like hot rod people. And I got oh, yeah. asked to go to a hot rod show. It's called the Hot Rod Show. And it's on October 8th, somewhere in this little tiny town in California. And it's going to wow. be like all of these... Um, hot rods like these amazing cars people have uh redone to it's going to be so cool you want to come <laughs> no you don't have to come but remember when we were in sacramento and we saw that it was show, uh, american graffiti was showing on that at that theater in town and there was a hot rod that went by and they were like McKenzie! McKenzie! yes i do remember that that was fun huh. yeah just a little info Send me the info about it. Maybe okay. I can go. It's going to be fun. It's in a tiny little town. What's uh, the town called? Hang on a second. Hot Rod Show. You know what? I don't know. Huh. I don't know. Sorry, well, Hot Rod people. I'll say yes, but it will depend on probably when it's happening exactly. It's October 8th. Like, it's near I'm Stockton. Oh, oh, near Stockton? Yeah. So Stockton is the it's the cattle town of California. Do you, did, you, did you know that? Uh, no, I don't think I knew that. So when you go to Stockton, it smells like manure. When I go to Stockton, I'm going to try and save all the cows from slaughter. The the Adam and vegetarian over here. Hey, so what do you think is going on with Trump? So we woke up this morning. The New York Times is breaking, breaking, breaking every six hours. And the latest is that Donald Trump Jr. had an email and knew exactly that he was going to be meeting with Russian operatives who had damaging in information on Hillary. And they were uh, working to help him uh, win the election. And uh, could, it, could it be any crazier? I don't think it could be any crazier. It's, it's going down. Something's going to happen. 
Does it or it's feel already like a happened. Deal? What? Does it feel like a smoking gun? Like this it is feels, gonna actually It feels like one. I mean I hate to use a, a you know a phrase, but it feels like a house of cards that's gonna uh, collapse. Gosh, it's so weird. It's like we're living in this other reality, but you know, twenty six percent of Americans are diehard Trump fans and they will not be swayed, so no. until yeah. their health care gets taken away and you know, all yeah. of these things that they didn't have the expectation that could happen are going to happen, and then what? Well, I have to say, I woke up this morning, I saw that headline, and I was actually kind of happy. And uh, because I, I'm a believer that at the end of the day, justice will usually prevail, although I mean it. It doesn't always. Does, yeah. But I'm hoping that uh, that son goes to jail. I hope Paul Manafort goes to jail. I hope the son in law goes to jail. Kushner. Mm, Kushner. Yeah. So not so Kush in jail, is it Kushner? Not so Kush. Does it? Do you feel destabilized by it though, as a woman in recovery? I don't. I mean, I don't because my laser focus is so much on my work that, and I know that that's what happens to a lot of people. That the rest of it seems like yes, I know what's happening. Yes, I'm up on what's going on, but I've got this task to complete. And so my my focus is kind of scattered. I think I'm not blaming the 10 pounds I gained on Trump from the election, but I think that I did tend to eat a bit more just because of stress. I was thinking I was more aware of the possibility of nuclear a holocaust. And I actually said to Scott, honey, what do you think about me buying a gun? I, I did. I did say that. And he said, no. What are you, an idiot? We're not buying guns. Yeah, we've but had I that conversation in my house, too, yeah. about, I think we should maybe mm-hmm. buy a gun, because what if they come to, like, yeah. requisition our home or something? Uh, I landed on no gun after an intervention from my husband. So. We're still considering a firearm. Ah. Yeah. You know, 47% of American households have guns. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Well, anyway. Hey, so thanks to those that asked questions last time. We are just learning how to actually read your questions as they come in, and we'll get to questions at the end of today's Mac and Me. Mac and Me. Mac and Me. Okay. So, hey, Mac, when's your Battle of the Network Stars airing? You know, I just texted my agent, Geneva, this morning to ask her for the air date, and she said she doesn't know, but she'll find out and get back to me. So maybe by next week I'll have that information. I saw an ad on uh, online for it. Deb was actually watching it the other night, and she texted wow. me, and she goes, I can't wait for your episode. And I'm like, oh, God. No, I can't either. I remember when I was a kid, I loved that show. I loved doing that show when I was a kid. Yeah. It was fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. And uh, I was at a thing the other night where they were talking about Norman Lear. <sighs> and... Uh, that he had he had told a friend that was at supper that he was so happy that you were doing the show. Really? Yeah. Oh my God! The first yeah. episode that I'm doing this year uh, for the Netflix reboot of One Day at a Time starts taping at the end of this month. Very exciting. I'm excited for sure. Okay, so hot topics here. I just have to ask you this, Mac. Do you think that this? Then this health bill is going to go down. Is Obamacare going to go away, or is it going to be totally blocked? There's so I much think at, that at the iteration we're at of it now, it's going to be totally blocked. I I don't think they can take it down completely. Um, I think that some version of Obamacare will prevail, uh, but I think they're going to dilute it and water it down to the extent that it's going to be almost unrecognizable. Hey, guess what? What? I'm going to a high school reunion this Friday. You are? Yeah. I'm going to mine in August. You, are you nervous? No. You aren't? No. Hmm. No, because I'm, I see a lot of the people on Facebook and, you know, and the school I went to was called Hollywood Professional School and it was uh-huh. on Hollywood Boulevard right near the corner of Western oh, yeah. and there were like ice skaters and Leif Garrett and uh-huh. the Williams twins. And um, 
Uh, Andy Williams' nephews, these really handsome twins, and I dated one of them, but he broke up with me because I was a drug addict. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, Andy. No. His name was Andy Williams. Wow, okay. So it's this school, it, the reunion is like from people who were in school in the 50s all the way up to the 80s. So it's not a yearly, a class reunion, it's a school reunion. The one I'm going to on Friday night, okay, so I bought a ticket to the one on Saturday night, which is all the classes. It's Whittier Christian High School. Wow. So I'm I'm going definitely going to the Friday night, which is 80 to 90. But I, I said on the, the Facebook page that I was going to the Saturday one, that I'd gone gotten that ticket to the Saturday one, and somebody chimed in that, how dare you come, you sodomite. Somebody oh, wrote, my God. So there was this big argument about it, like you shouldn't say that to Brad, and then other people were quoting scripture from the Old Testament. So I don't feel incredibly welcome to the Saturday night event. <laughs> but yeah, that doesn't to, sound very welcoming. But I have to say, I think the only way that you can introduce gay and lesbian folks to people that have no idea of gays and lesbians is to let them get to know you, so. That's right, to be I'm around you. I'm a little scared. Don't be Scott scared. Is not, Scott is gonna go with me, and he's not, he's backed out. Oh no, Scott, come on. I know, would you go though? If you were, if you were a spouse, and you thought it sounded slightly unwelcoming, would you go? Yes, Just to, you I would, would. I, would. Yeah. I would, I would be there in support. But my Scott current spouse is a nine-year-old pug, so. Nah. That's a little different. Put him in the bag. Yeah. Scott changed his flight to Monday, so he ain't coming. All right, Scott. Fine, right. whatever. Hey, so, um, you know, I was no noticing this week, too, it, it made a headline. It was actually on the CNN special that I, I did a couple weeks ago. Um, there's the sheriff in Ohio that has ordered his department not to use Narcan, which is the, the safe medicine for a person who's overdosed on an op opioid. I read um, what, that. What that? A cold-hearted bastard. Yeah. Is yeah, let's really? not save him. It's yeah, it seems like even from a liability standpoint, they wouldn't, you wouldn't say that out loud, but... Oh, you make a good point. Yeah. But people, I think people are, t I, th I think some people are just tired of it, but it's also people are just tired of addicts. Well, then help there's, us. There's, there's that compassion threshold that I think is different. So they have compassion fatigue. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. If I was that, if that guy was my uncle, that sheriff. Yeah. You know, I'd go knock on his door and talk to him. Yeah. I did try to send a note, email to the sheriff's department, but I don't know if it got through. That's good. Will you um, forward me the email address and I'll write one as well? Yes. Thank you. You know, I also sent an email to, and it doesn't matter, but I did send another email recently to someone else. You know, just to try to have your name be, your voice be heard. Yes, absolutely. You never know if it, if they read them or not. But Could I make tend a to difference. Yeah. I'll make an appeal to that sheriff. Uh, any questions? Um, oh. I just want to say hi, Amy. My friend Amy Campy in Dallas is. Oh, she says hi. hi. Yeah, hi, she says, Amy. Hey, what's your boo. Amy's a counselor too. She's awesome. Oh, Where does she work? Uh, that I can't tell you. I think she works for a, like a state facility. <laughs> I don't really know. So you Maybe can't. Not. It's not that you don't want to say it, but you don't know. I actually. don't know, Amy. Where do you work? Maybe Amy she'll say. Maybe she'll say right now. Yeah, fair enough. Hey, Greg Lamb says hi, too. You know, Lam the Lamb boys are in the house. Hi, Greg Lamb. We miss you. We love you. Kim Duncan writes, I can understand the compassion fatigue, but then I can also look at my child and get his own un uh, overwhelmed need to hug her and my fatigue gets a second breath. There you go. Yeah, I hear you. I don't think the sheriff is going to hug anybody, though. That's no. probably the, part of the problem. Yeah. Um, okay, so you want to go to some questions that we got? Mac? From last week? Yeah, but you know, we say ask us anything, but really, if it's deeply offensive, I'm, we're just not going to say it live, but... Yeah. The, I mean, we are filtering somewhat. Did we get a deeply offensive question? Uh, I, I did screen one out. 
Oh, I want to see it. It was based on the Old Testament. Oh, oh. Uh, oh, Amy, where do you work? Amy said, I missed everything you just said. My internet cut out. Yeah. Where do you work, Amy? She's typing. Okay, here's the question. Um, who was your closest childhood friend, and did that influence your drug use? That's an interesting question from Jordan's what? Cohen. She says, I have three jobs. She, oh, she has three jobs. Amy has three jobs. Okay. What about you, Brad, with your closest childhood friend? Hmm. No, I don't think so. My, my, my closest friends, I think, helped to minimize my use because they, I would, this is just how I tended to make friends. I would look at friends and think, like, who would I be less prone to do self-destructive things around? So I kind of tended toward that. Wow, that's, that that's exhibits afraid. a lot of, lot of self-awareness to... But I was really afraid of, you know, I did meth when I was very young. Mm -hmm. And I was very, and I, I smoked like the Dickens. And, uh, you know, I, want, I, I was aware of the, the way that people rub off on each other. And I was afraid of having bad friends because I thought, God, if I'm any worse, it's going to be really bad. How about you? Well, I was. What comes to mind is my best friend growing up. Her name is. Her name's Julie. We're we're still friends. We haven't seen each other in years, but social media has sort of brought us back together. But I remember when we were like very young. I stole some acid from my dad, and um, Julie and I took it together. And then she cut my hair on acid, and it was like really bad. So, but I I, I don't think that that. I think I influenced her drug use. I don't necessarily think she influenced mine, and then she went on to not be a person with a substance use disorder, and I did. Mm. I do remember during high school, my friends Ken and David and I drove that We each told the other one, the other our parents, that we were staying at the other one's house, and we went out in L.A. to an underage club, and we got we were very liquored up, and the car broke down on the way back, Ooh. and. And it was, it was my car, and my dad is a, was a preacher, and it was Saturday night. And I remember we had to call my dad at like 3 a.m. and ask him to come <sighs> help us get home. It was a very dark day in the land house. Ooh, yeah. Very disappointed. Uh, oh, Amy, you work at the right step. Very nice. Oh, we've actually to the referred to the, F step, F, the, the right step for aftercare, I think. Yeah. Yep, I think. Yep, yep. Okay, one more question, and uh, we're going to wrap up for this week, okay? Okay. And next week, we're going to be together in L.A. Right, Yay. Matt? Yep. Okay, here's a question. How do you celebrate your recovery birthday? I celebrate my recovery birthday every day because every day is a win. And then on the actual day, I take cake, huh. a cake at my home group. How about you? Yes. Yes. I do that. I do that. Uh, and, and then probably like at five years, at ten years, there were bigger celebrations, you know? I think I had bigger celebrations in my first recovery, way bigger celebrations. And now I'm like, yeah, it's okay. I don't need to like, uh, you know, have a party at my house for I my understand. sobriety. Not anymore. Uh -huh. Well, thanks for your questions, everybody. Uh, and then we're gonna one, we're gonna have one last thing, which is the thought that we leave with you. My one last thing this week is there have been lots of there's been lots of talks talk in the industry about ethics and coming together to make change. And of course, my husband's calling the house and here trying to get a hold of me. Um, but you know what dawned on me last week, just during quiet time and meditation, was it, it starts with me and. It, how we how we work together at Breathe and how I live my life as a guy who sponsors people in recovery and so I'm really focusing on that right now and um, just kind of really focusing on keeping it close to home. That's beautiful. I can feel overwhelmed by it. That's how I was kind of feeling overwhelmed by it. I've been really nesting, like I said a couple weeks ago, um, practicing self care by working on my personal environment in my home. And it's been incredibly rewarding. Just scrubbing away. It feels it feels redemptive, scrubbing and cleaning and organizing and it makes me happy. 
nesting at the age of 57. Wow, you look foxy for 57, Max. Thank you. I'll see you uh, Thursday at the clinic. I fly out tomorrow night. Awesome. See you when you get here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you next week, 11 a.m. Tuesday. Is David Neuendorf in the office?